Welcome back to our Vote 2014 coverage. I'm Scott Thum, and you heard earlier in this broadcast from Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown running for governor of Maryland. Now we are affording the same opportunity to the man to my right here, the Republican candidate for the governor's seat, and that is Larry Hogan. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Let's start by talking about some new polling number. This is polling number that was commissioned by your campaign, but nonetheless, it shows a 17-point swing. You were down 12 a couple months ago, shows you up five. Do you actually believe these numbers that you're ahead in, in a Democratic state like Maryland? Well, there have been two polls this week, and we've been gradually, you know, moving up the ladder. There were polls uh, maybe three weeks ago that had us within one or two points, and the most recent ones are two polls this week that have it three to five points up. Uh, but really, the only poll that counts is the one on Election Day. So we're working and running like we're way behind, and we're not going to take anything for granted. We're trying to get every single person out to vote. The entire time, you've stuck to a pretty singular message here, and that regards taxes. You've gone over, uh, over and over again against Anthony Brown on tax increases over his time as lieutenant governor. This is a tactic that seems to be working. Well, it's not just a tactic. You know, I started a group three and a half years ago called Change Maryland mm -hmm. that has become the largest and fastest growing nonpartisan citizen group in state history. 125,000 people, half of whom are Democrats and independents, and our whole focus has been about bringing fiscal responsibility and common sense to Annapolis. Okay, so where would you roll taxes back? So there have been 40 consecutive tax hikes that have taken an additional $10 billion out of the pockets of struggling Maryland families and small businesses. My goal, we have a balanced budget requirement in Maryland, mm -hmm. um, so you can't eliminate taxes without cutting spending. We are, have identified a couple of billion dollars in uh, spending that we think we can cut out of state government, and then we're going to try to roll back as many of the 40 Brown O'Malley increases as we possibly can. Give me one you'd go after pretty quickly here, because the Baltimore Sun, one of many institutions that claim that both you and your opponent have been short on specifics in this race. Where would you cut? Well, we've been talking about specifics for three and a half years, and um, the first place we're going to go after is people that are on fixed incomes are the ones suffering the most. Most of these 40 tax increases are regressive taxes that hurt people people on fixed incomes and lower income and middle class families. So the first thing we talked about was trying to cut taxes on people, uh, for, on uh, taxes, income taxes on retirement income and rolling back as many of the tolls, fees and taxes that hit people at the lower end of the income scale the most. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Brown has promised that he's not going to make any more uh, tax increases. Do you believe him? You know what's funny? In the, in the last election in 2010, both uh, Governor O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Brown made the exact same promise right before the largest tax increases in history and right before they raised taxes 40 times in a row. So no, I don't believe him. And it's, he just came up with this a couple of weeks ago because he saw in the polls that we were gaining and that my message that I've been focused on for three and a half years is one he now wants to adopt and nobody's buying it. All right, let's listen very quickly to a, a little clip from an ad that his campaign is running. Okay. He helped raise taxes 40 times in a row. He even taxed the rain. That's actually not an ad from his campaign, that's from yours. It's so, not even an ad that was on television, that's just a, 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 a web sure, thing. Sure, but you think it's resonating. Yeah. Uh, I, I do want to, in, in one of his ads, he goes after you saying that uh, when it comes to gun control, um, that all you're going to do is protect gun rights, that you are not going to in any way help make the community safer. In fact, uh, he goes so far as to say that the only way that you might be willing to would be to keep guns out of the hands of the mentally unstable. Is that true? Is that the only measure you're willing to take to make it safer it, in, in it's Maryland? It's complete nonsense. So, you know, my opponent who's been unable and unwilling to defend his eight-year record of failure on the economic issues has run what's been called across the country the most negative and most dishonest uh, advertising campaign in the entire nation. Every single word and every single one of his ads is completely false. Yeah. I've said repeatedly that we're going to enforce all the gun laws on the books. We're not going to roll back any of them. We just passed the toughest gun control laws in the entire nation, and we're going to implement those laws. What I said was um, that we, we really want to try to keep guns out of the hands of the mentally ill and people with criminal backgrounds, with criminal records, and this bill didn't really do that. So there, there may be some additional things. but. Uh, there's really not much difference between the two of us. And I've been talking throughout the entire campaign about we're going to keep the laws that are on the books and enforce them. Talk to me about an ad that's come out uh, rather controversial in the last few days that's talking about race in this uh, campaign. And it almost seems to imply that Marylanders need to keep uh, the movement going. And when they say the movement, they're talking about Barack Obama and that the, somehow if they don't elect uh, a black governor, that they're missing an opportunity. Uh, Brad Bell interviewed Anthony Brown just a few moments ago, and here's what he had to say about whether or not they're playing the race card. 
Our flyer was basically in, uh, to remind voters that, hey, this is an important right and responsibility that many have struggled for each of us to have. Is he playing the race card here? Well, you know, it's not really for me to say, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have run the campaign the same way he has, that's for sure. But I can tell you that we've uh, heard from a number of, uh, of black elected officials who are Democrats and a number of people that I've talked to in Prince George's County and Baltimore City who are sort of outraged uh, and insulted uh, by these ads and these mailers that he sent out. And I don't think it's helping his campaign. What about dreamers? You've got thousands of uh, people who would like to stay in Maryland while they try and figure out what their status will be for immigration purposes. Well, Should I, they be allowed to stay until it's sorted out? Well, it's, it's a huge problem that uh, the, both the president and the Congress, both Republicans and Democrats, have failed and they've been kicking the can down the road for years without coming up with any kind of a comprehensive, meaningful immigration reform policy, and it has to happen. But you think there's an incentive if they're allowed to stay? You think that's a negative? If they're allowed to say until it's sorted I think out. we got to seal the borders and figure out what the laws are going to be and then implement the laws. And that's in the meantime, a failure what about people who are already in the state? Well, we're going to continue to, 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 to uh, implement the exact same laws that are on the books in Maryland right now. We're going to implement the federal and state laws. Same sex marriage, you in favor of it? It's passed by the voters and it's absolutely going to stay in place. Nothing's going to change. We've said we're going to, well, all these decisions that have been made by the voters of Maryland. Uh, I wouldn't even think about second guessing their decisions. Well, and I know that there's a difficulty in when you're, uh, say you win, you're a Republican governor, you've got a very Democratic yeah. legislature you're dealing with. Uh, they've got a, essentially what a veto proof 98 in the House, 35 in the Senate. Right. But does that then, because you can say, well, there are things I can't affect, can right. you affect anything? We got social media questions today saying we're just yeah. looking at more gridlock if you get elected. Well, you know, I think what we're really looking at is checks and balances. And people are concerned that we have a monopoly now where they just roll through whatever they want. And the reason why. I think we're doing so well and the, why I think we're going to win this race is we've talked about this really isn't a fight between Republicans and Democrats. It's about bringing people together, reaching across the aisle and trying to come up with real common sense bipartisan solutions. And we intend to work very closely with the Democrats and the Republicans in both houses of the legislature. And I think we can get a lot done. All right. Th this is a race that, let's be honest, a few months ago, uh, the polls showed a pretty big divide between you two. Now we've got Chris Christie coming for what his fourth visit. He's coming on Sunday to campaign for you. What does it say when you have big, big guns like Chris Christie who are devoting that much time returning to your state multiple times? And what is he telling you right now that you can do in the last few days to actually affect this race? Well, you know, it's interesting that this race was sort of ignored for a long, long time. And now what we have is both uh, the Democratic uh, 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 Governors Association and the Republican Governors Association both focusing on it. Typically, this would be one that the Democrats would just take for granted and the Republicans would write off and not even consider. Uh, but we now are, uh, it, uh, in some polls, tied, in some polls, we're ahead. It's really changed the dynamic. In fact, today, the Cook Political Report moved this to a toss up race. Yeah. Um, it was a, a likely Democrat <laughs> to a lean Democrat. Now it's a toss up. And most people are saying this may be the biggest upset in the entire country. Real quickly, we got a social media question just in from Erica. She wants to know uh, what you are going to do when it comes to the problems with education and school spending. And I know that you've been accused of wanting to cut school yeah. spending for construction. Is that true? It's completely false. Uh, as are most of the things that my opponent says, we're not going to cut one penny in school funding. In fact, I served as a cabinet secretary in the Ehrlich administration where we doubled spending on education. Um, and we're going to continue to uh, try to improve education as much as we can. We, we really have some very good schools here in Maryland, um, but we got some of the worst schools in the country. And the gap between the good schools and the bad schools is one of the worst in the entire nation. And we've got to work to make sure that every single child in Maryland has an opportunity for a world-class education. I'm going to make you a last question. I'm going to make you give me a, a short answer for a very complex Sorry. question. It's yeah. very unfair. <laughs> You've never held elected office. Right. What qualifies you to take this position in such a pivotal time in our nation? I think I'm really qualified because uh, people are fed up with career politicians that spend their entire lives in office. I'm a, I'm a businessman who's been very successful, and I've been a cabinet, cabinet secretary in state government and know how it works. Larry Hogan, thank you so much for the time. Good thank luck. you. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Allison, Leon, back to you guys. Okay, Scott, thank you both very much. And we have profiles on all the candidates in our local races at WJLA.com. Be sure to join us Tuesday night as the election results start to come in. Oh.